I have extreme OCD. I am ultimately somebody that is a little wacky when it comes to checking things over and over and over again. This basically means that I'm running out the clock on my life every time I do that. Every time I do something and then redo it and then redo it, what I'm basically saying is I don't need this time that I've been given. The gift that we are all given by being given time in this world to do whatever we can come up with, to create as many things as we could possibly create, that's a gift, that time, and the freedom to do whatever we want with the time. And what I basically do is I throw it away by checking things, and checking things, and checking things. It's like I literally am running out the clock on my life. Now, you could look at what I'm doing very similar to somebody who finishes a song, thinks it sounds great, and then, you know, a week later decides to basically check on what could be maybe improved on a song that's already done. You're running out the clock on your life by looking behind you at what could have maybe been done better in order to have achieved a better result. There's several things you're doing, but one of them is putting too much importance on the result. A lot of people think that happiness comes from great results. It's not really true. The people that are the most happy are the ones that are enjoying the progress, enjoying the journey, the travel time, the road to the success. The success happens as a byproduct of enjoying what you're doing and doing it consistently every day for a long enough period of time. So it's never about the end result. And this is especially true with creative people and artists. If you're focused on what happens at the end only, then what happens all the time between when you get there and where you are? You're just going to be miserable the whole time? You're going to be somebody who is constantly waking up thinking that could have been better, this could have been better, this, this could... I mean, you're just always going to be living in the negative and you expect to be a happy person. You expect to be somebody who's bringing positivity to this world. You expect to have luck and all the things in the universe that have to align for success to happen. You expect that that's going to happen for you when you're this negative person who's spending all this time thinking about what they could have done better, what what if we would have just changed this? I wonder if that would have been better. What if you're thinking in the what ifs? You know what this reminds me of? I just sold some stuff on Facebook Marketplace. It was like uh, like fishing stuff, you know, and it was a bunch of stuff that was basically like some, a lot of stuff that I can't use, don't use anymore because I don't have time. I've got no time. So I had all this fishing stuff that belonged to me and it was like, you know, some given to me from my father, you know, when he passed. It's just like all this stuff. And, you know, it, this has nothing to do with like none of it was really sentimental because the sentimental stuff I would never get rid of. But to me, this was just like a bunch of stuff that I didn't need. So I sold it. And in selling it, I basically said to myself, you know, I'm willing to take this much which was less than I really wanted to take, but I'm willing to take less because this person was willing to come that day. Now, there might have been people who would have come a, a week later, a month later, two months later, and paid me a little more. And I said, forget that. I'm willing to take this lower number and get it done today. Because just getting that off of my mind and the stuff out of my place, just getting rid of it, felt great to me. And, and what I could have done and this is, it tr entered my mind for a second. Man, I would have loved to have gotten a couple extra hundred bucks for it. Wonder if I should have waited. Wonder if I should have held out a little longer. Now, I let that thought enter because it actually entered accidentally, just out of nowhere, just got in there because that's what happens. The negative thoughts find a way in. There could be a little crack in the door. You give them any light at all, any space, they're finding their way in. They slip through and then... I have to basically put the army in my brain up against it and fight it and then just just quell that whole thought process and say, nah, you're lucky to get what you got. And now you can go back to doing what you were doing. You don't got to waste any more time talking to people about that. 
which has got nothing to do with my career, with my future, with my life. It's just something in the way. And getting that thing done and getting whatever I could for it was extremely important to me. Rather than spending any more thought process on it. And also, rather than dwelling in the negative, which would make me choose to be not happy. Like, I'm choosing happiness by being like, that was a great amount of money I got for this. Now, moving on to the next thing in my life. That's a choice that I made. Rather than to say and to let that thought ruminate and spread and grow into a big monster in my head that says, man, I wish I would have waited another week or two or a month, or however long it took to get a little bit more money for it. You know what I'm saying? This is a choice. A lot of people think being depressed isn't a choice. And I want to let you guys know, I am not somebody who, you know, I'm not a therapist. I didn't go to school for this. I wouldn't say I'm like qualified to give you guys everything there is. All I can do is tell you what works for me and the way I view things. I was at one time an extremely depressed person who basically constantly all day said I can't. I said I can't or I won't or, you know, no to my ability to do things. Or just I'll put it off till tomorrow. So delaying is something a lot of us do. We say we can't, which is basically saying, you know, I won't. If you've ever done any sort of like, you know, long distance running, the first time you ever do that, everybody usually experiences this when they're young kids. There's like, you'll be running or something, even on the treadmill track, any of that stuff. And then all of a sudden, you'll get to a point where you're like, man, I'm exhausted. I'm going to stop. That's what happens. And then a lot of us do stop. And some of us, we fight through that. Now, usually you need somebody to tell you, like a coach or your parent or your brother, somebody to be like, don't quit. Keep going. Trust me. You'll be fine. Breathe. Learn to breathe like this. You're not going to die. Keep going. You're You're okay. Keep it moving. Trust me. And then eventually you get into that breathing pattern, that habit of this is how you breathe. You get rid of the carbon dioxide. You take in the oxygen. You force it out. You know, that's the thing. When you're running and you force out your breath, then the oxygen coming in actually happens relatively naturally. Getting rid of the carbon dioxide is what will prevent you from cramping, will prevent you from stopping, because that's the stuff that really starts to, to get to us. Whereas if you force it out, the oxygen comes in. So just by doing that, and then the first time you go farther than you could before, you realize, I didn't need to stop. I think some people spend their whole life never learning that, going through the motions of thinking they're working as hard as they can when they're not, going through the motions of saying, I can't do more than this. You know, I can't do this and this, you know, like this is all I can do. They're basically just putting a limit on what is possible for them, on their future, on anything that they could possibly achieve. They're just limiting it to them, to what they determine is they can't. Anything beyond the the, they can't, once they can't, I can't, comes into the picture. As soon as that happens, it's all over. You might as well not do at that point because you can't. So what I venture to say, and this is what worked for me, is count the amount of times you say no in a day. This is actually something that my mother used to say. And she still does every once in a while. Count the amount of times you say no, or I can't, or I don't. Count count that. And you better be saying I can, and, you, and I will, way more in a, the course of a day. Add them up. Add the, the no's and add the, and add the yeses. If there's even close to the amount of no's as there are yeses, you got to change that immediately. Every single thing you do throughout the day, you should be, how can I say yes? How can I do this? And not, I'll try to do it. I'll try to do it's 50-50. You're half in, you're half out. 50-50, I'll try. That's not the right way either. It's either I'll do it, I can, and you say this even when you're not sure. Just trust yourself. Say I can and then do it. And this is what I want you to realize is the success, that happiness I talked about in the beginning, that all comes from the work. You must put your reward system in place in the right way. The reward comes from working. 
The reward comes from doing the things you said you you thought in your head that you doubt. Could you do? You say you can, then you do it no matter what, however long it takes. And that is your reward system, the doing, not the achieving. In other words, not you don't need the gold record to be an artist who's on the path to success. You don't need that accolade of you won the Grammy. What you need to do is enjoy what you're doing so that you keep doing it. You get that rush, the dopamine, the excitement from doing it. You need to be somebody who gets it from doing it. Because as long as you're the producer, the type of person who can keep going, whether artist, producer, mixer, and you get the joy from the work, from actually getting through that mix, being done and sending it out, if that gives you the joy, you're on the right track. If you're the artist and you do your, your, you do your well best to get that thing done as great as you can, then you send it off to be mixed, you are, should be excited about just being done. Being having done all that, made the song as good as you can, you send it out. You don't question whether you could have sung it a little better here, there, or whatever. You let the person who's mixing it do their very, very well best. You put the two together. Now that's the very well best that thing can be. And that's the bottom line. Don't look backwards. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, if. Never. This is the negative stuff that will bring you down. You will be running out the clock. Just like somebody who checks things 17 times when they don't have to. I tell myself this stuff on a daily basis so that I don't do that ridiculous checking routine that I did for so long. So long. I shut the light switch off. I got to make sure it's off. Is it off? I don't know. Is it off? Let's see. Let's see if the light switch is off. You, you know how crazy that is? It's a little nuts, but it's no more nuts than finishing something and then looking back and saying, could I have done it better? It's no more nuts than accepting a certain price for something. And then as soon as you're done, an hour or two, three later, you think, eh, I could have got more. That's unfortunate. I got this. I wish I would have got this. They're all equally crazy. They're all equally somebody who's living in the past. They're equally somebody who's comparing themselves to where other people are and how not successful they are. That's ridiculous. It's never going to put you in a positive lane to get to the end where you want to be, which is only, this is the end, somebody who enjoys what they're doing, somebody who can live every day waking up positive to do what they're going to do. That's really it. If you can wake up out of bed, be happy about what you're doing, that's really all you got to do and maintain that throughout the day, never looking backwards, always positive forward motion, then be done and do it again the next day. You will get where you're going. There's like no question in my mind that you will get there because that sort of mindset consistently, you can't stop somebody like that. That's an unstoppable person. And then when, God forbid, something happens that's a bad thing in your life because we all will experience some kind of trauma at some point, no matter what, it's just we're not immune to it. When it happens, you'll be able to deal with it because that mindset you built is like building strength inner strength mental strength you are building the the wall that will keep you strong and safe that cannot be blown over or pushed around or moved off your center when something bad happens and then others will be able to count on you as well so there's so many more benefits than just internal for you you actually benefit everyone the people you love the world around you everyone gets huge benefit from people that learn how to toughen themselves up in this way. Whereas those of us who like to keep looking backwards and keep checking things and live in that insecurity, you just never get enough done to be successful. You never do. I mean, I know I did it for years, years and years and years and years. And it took me a long time to actually trust myself. So I'm not saying this happens overnight. I'm not saying it's easy. You can't snap your fingers and do it. But what you can do is understand what it takes. It takes the positive mindset, trusting yourself, never looking backwards and getting that reward from the work you're doing, not the results of it is also the answer. You cannot be focused on where you're not and where someone else is. You must only be focused on the work because that will keep you centered. You wake up every day positive. You go to bed positive because of what you've done that day. That's it. That's all you got to do. So today, 
Do more. Do more with the day, every day. Don't look back. It can't be better than it was done because guess what? It was done. It's done. The next thing is what's up now on the chopping block. The next thing. Knock the I can't out. As soon as you hear yourself say I can't, I can't do this. Be nah, don't let yourself say it. Just like when that thought came into my head about maybe I could have got a little more, cut it down immediately. That grows. Just like laziness grows. That's why for the people who have been lazy up till this point, it's the hardest for you to change yourself. The more lazy you've been, the harder it will be to change. But the point is, you can do more than you're actually doing. We can all do more than we're actually doing. As soon as we stop telling ourselves we can't, we will. All right? I hope you dug it. Throw a comment in there, whether you like it, don't like it, either way. I'm sure I'll hear from a ton of people saying, you can't change to whatever to whatever. Yeah. Well, maybe you can't, but I could. So I'm think, I think you guys can too. And it's not like a permanent thing. I work at it every day. Every time I shut the light, I think to myself, I want to check it. And I go, nope, not today. And I keep moving. And it's getting easier. It's getting easier. So if I could give you guys anything, I'm giving you guys that. All right? You can do it just like I can. We can all do it. So you guys got this. I hope you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Talk to you guys soon. Evan Jaffe, Custom Cut Studios. You seriously got this. Take it easy.